this rainy afternoon in August, I'm going to speak with Rudolf Hugger. Rudy Hugger is an old friend of mine with whom I have worked many years ago. And he has worked now for a long time on a book called in German Die Heilige Schnur. And I'm here this afternoon to talk with him about the meaning of this book. Rudy, I'm very happy that we have this time this afternoon to speak about this new book of yours, which is not yet even out, but which seems to me a whole lot of work on symbols, on Nepal, on India, on religions. What made you feel that this book needed to see the light of day? Why is it important that we read this book? This book has to do with Nepal and with my relationship with Nepal. I have throughout my life worked very often and for sometimes long periods in Nepal. And I have many friends there, Hindus and Buddhists. And it so happened that about two and a half years back, I was invited by a family of friends in the vicinity of Kathmandu. They have a boy of seven years who was to be initiated according to the upper caste Hindu manner. He was to receive the Heilige Schnur, the sacred thread. I was invited to be a guest during that uh, ceremony and to take a specific role too, the role of Mama, of the brother, of the mother of the boy. And all this impressed me so much and I saw so many parallels between the rituals and the symbols employed in that initiation that I thought I must write about it, give it back as a present to my friends in Nepal, but give it also to my friends here in Switzerland to show them how close the religions come to each other when we closely look at some of these uh, ceremonies. I'm here now with a copy of this book. This is the original manuscript that you wrote, uh, Rudy. And what you just mentioned in my understanding of things is that you find it important to show the commonalities and not so much the differences between different religions. Is that the essence of the book or is there more to it, which I, in my short glimpse of it, have maybe yet not fully understood? Yes, indeed. This, uh, you could say, this is the essence of the book. I describe a number of symbols like the six-pointed star or the cross or the circumambulation of the fire and other symbols and a number of rituals like the shaving of the hair of the boy the bathing of the boy, the receiving of the sacred thread, and so on. And uh, I compare these symbols and rituals with very similar, parallel, analogous symbols in other religions, and try to find out what is the common meaning, the meaning that would be the same for a Christian, for a Hindu, for a Buddhist, or a Muslim. And uh, then that common basis of these rituals and symbols I interpret in a modern psychological language. A language which modern man in Europe or in India or Sri Lanka or Nepal can understand. Okay, now you say that this is actually a, a ceremony with a symbol that is used in this religion as well as in other religions. What is the essence of this sacred thread and, and, and how does that link to the other religions? What, what, where does it link in essence mm -hmm. to what? Mm -hmm. I think the central element in every initiation 
of the four religions that I have mentioned, and I think far beyond in other religions as well, is uh, the creation of a relationship of the young person who is to be initiated to the beyond. And by beyond I mean what in some religions is called God or Buddhahood or Brahman or Atman or Allah. It is a relationship of the human individual to a power, a force, a reality which is beyond human, which can be felt within one's own heart, which can be experienced outside, but, between, but which is as such not human but bigger, more powerful than human. Initiation in that uh, sense in all religions means initiation in a consciousness that knows I as a human being am not the only reality in this cosmos. There is something bigger, something more important to which I can re relate and that relationship is important for uh, my life to be meaningful. I think that is the essence of the sacred thread as well. We live in a time where there's a lot of religious strife, where uh, religions are actually always portrayed as being opposed to one another, as, uh, as one being either better or worse, or, and that leads to a lot of yeah, rivalry, um, wars, and we of course are all too familiar with how that goes also in political uh, ways where politicians use their religion or the religion they adhere to to actually destroy others and other people's religions. Is your book um, aiming at or wanting to have a function in uh, trying to show that this is not the case, that, that religions should actually uh, understand each other better and, and have one origin or one mm -hmm. common purpose or, mm -hmm. or perspective or mm -hmm. yeah. how, how do you look at that? Yeah, I think you could uh, say that. Of course you are right. In the world today, in all religions, in all parts of the world, there is a lot of non-understanding, there is a lot of misuse of religion by power, for politics, for economic reasons, for social reasons. And uh, no wonder that uh, many, many people, maybe a majority of the people today in the world, in a way reject religion and find it is a reason for strife and war and uh, wanting to be better and having more power and so on. The purpose of my writing and my personal experience in so many years in Asia is that if you try to look behind an individual ritual or an individual symbol, uh, then usually you find something very, very basic, uh, which can be understood even by modern man, maybe not so much in religious terms, but also in psychological terms. Let me give an example of that. In the Hindu ritual of the sacred thread, one part is the shaving of the head. And uh, looking closely at that ritual, you find that actually it is symbolic of dying. You cut off all your head, you cut off something beautiful, you throw the head into the river the same way as later on when you die, the ashes of your body will be thrown into the river. That shaving of the head and the hair being thrown into the river is a dying symbol. Now for what? What is going to buy to die with a seven years old boy, with a, with a young man who is going to live? The symbolic meaning is that an idea of the only reality in the, this world is me, is the I. This is going to die. And immediately afterwards, the boy is being based 
Like in Christianity, in baptism, you're based and you come out of the water again. That is, you are reborn again. The re being reborn ritual, which means now something new, another personality is rising from the water, is being reborn, and that's the personality which knows that there is more than an I. There is more to life than just the ego. There is a relationship with other human beings, with the whole of creation, with animals, and with the beyond, with God. And this is something we find in all the four religions I've talked about. And if we come back to that basic meaning again, you can ask, what does it mean in the daily life of a modern woman or man living in a city? It means, for instance, that if I have failed, if I have lived through a very difficult part of my life, that's not the only reality. Rebirth is possible. Finding new strengths, new energy, having the feeling that I would tell to you, today I feel like being reborn. I feel new energy. I can restart my life. I can find new support, I can find new hope, I can find new meaning in life. Even though in the past I have lived through terrible catastrophes, that is a reality which can be experienced by anybody in any religion. And I think the religions are treasures holding that possibility for the human being irrespective of whether he is a Hindu, a Christian, a Buddhist or a Muslim. Thank you, Rudy. That was very enlightening. I know the book is only supposed to come out in German somewhere later this year and maybe at some point also in English. We look forward to, to, to seeing the book and, and reading it. And thank you for the time that you have been able to spend with us. Well, thank you, Jan, for your interest in what I've been doing. You're right, uh, the book was first written in German and I hope that it will be out sometime next year. We are just about starting negotiation with the publisher now. I'm working on an English translation of it, which is uh, edited by an English-speaking Hindu woman of uh, Bangalore, South India. And when that will be out, I don't know yet, but I'm looking very much forward to that, so I'm able to give it back as a present to my friends in Nepal and in India. <laughs>